So what we're going to do now is have a look at some questions that might be able to be done another way, other than the way I just taught you. All right, so let's have a look at this one. Now, if you saw that in an exam question, I'm hoping that you would see that it would be a good idea to get this plus 5 to the other side to join the other number. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to keep that 15 there. And I'm going to move this over to the other side. And that will become minus 5. And that leaves this fraction sitting over here. So if we just keep going, collect our numbers there. This question works out fairly easily because you're just solving the equation now, getting rid of everything that's with that A. We'll get rid of the divided by 4 first. And we'll be timesing by 4 over here. That gives us A plus 1 equals 40. Now we're going to get rid of the plus 1. And we'll be minusing one to the other side. And now you've got your answer. A equals 39. So you can do it like that, all right? Or, if you wanted to, you could still do it the way we were doing. So when you start with this question, if you really wanted to, you could still look at it and go, okay, my denominator is 4, I've only got one denominator, so that must be the common denominator. And I'm going to multiply all three terms by 4. So it would look like this. And then you would keep going the way we did. All right, so they would cancel completely and you would just keep going with the question. And if you kept going like that, you'll eventually get the same answer as that, A equals 39. So you do have options with that one. I'll just do the last few lines, see we've got some space here. There's nothing outside that A plus 1 bracket to multiply by, so I'm just going to write it like that. And these things are just being multiplied, 4, 5 to 20, and 4, 15 to 60. At that point, you collect your like terms on the same side. And then move the 21, the plus 21 to the other side to become minus 21. And you end up with the exact same answer, A plus 39. So there's two ways that question could be done. So all of these could be done two ways. I'm going to just move to doing them this other way just to show you that it, it can work like that. So in this one, let's get our numbers together. We'll leave the 8 there. Move this over. It'll become plus 11. And our fraction will sit there. This is 19. And now we're getting rid of the divided by 3. So let's come over to the other side and times by 3. And then we'll work out 19 times 3. And now we're getting rid of our plus 1. Come to the other side and minus 1. And our final answer is P equals 56. But again, if you wanted to, I'm not going through the whole process this time, but if you take this question in the beginning and go, well, I'm going to do it the way we did the other ones. I'm going to look at the denominator. I've only got one denominator of 3, so that must be my common denominator. And I'm going to multiply all three terms by 3. And then you would keep going like that, and you would get the same answer if you continue. Alright, let's have a look at one more of these. So this one here, the easiest way to do it would be to move this plus 1 over with the other number. And that will be a minus 1 when we move it. That will give you minus 11 over there. Now we're going to get rid of the divided by 2. We're going to come over to the other side and times by the 2. And we've still got 10x minus 2 on this side. Work this out and we have minus 22 over there. All right, next thing we're moving is the minus 2. Come to the other side and plus 2. If you work that out, you get minus 20. And now we're getting rid of our times 10. So we come to the other side and divide by 10, write it as a fraction. And use your calculator fraction key to finish that off and you'll get minus x equals minus 2. Now, these next
next ones, I'm going to show you another method that works for these ones. I do not want you getting this mixed up and doing it all over the place because it only works in a particular situation. So what the method's called is cross-multiplying. Some of you may have heard of this already. You can only do it if you have a fraction equals a fraction. If it doesn't look like that, you can't cross multiply. All right? And the way it works is you would draw a cross through like that. So I'm going to do that at the top here. Now, really, really important that if you have more than one term on the top or the bottom, you must put it in brackets. So I'm going to get my red pen and draw brackets here because there's two terms on that top and brackets here because there's two terms on that top. So now I'm going to keep the equals in the middle there. So I'm going to multiply the 5 by the x plus 5. Now it's got a bracket there so you just copy it like that. And then I'm going to multiply the 4 by the x plus 4. Don't try and expand it without just write down what you see first. Keep the equals in the middle. It's not a multiplication. It's still an equation. The equals must stay in the middle like it always does. So now we're going to expand like we normally do. And let's see what we get. So we've got 5 times x, 5x, plus 25 equals 4x plus 16. Keep your equals under your equals. Majority rules. There's more x's here. So this 4x is coming across to join it. So the plus 4x moves over to become a minus 4x. Keep your number there. And our plus 25 comes across here to become minus 25 when it moves to the other side. So collect our like terms and we've just got 1x or x on the left. And over here we have minus 9, and that's your answer. So the beauty of cross-multiplying is that it gets rid of your fractions in one go. So in this next line, there's no fractions left. And it's basically the same as what we were doing before. It's done a little bit differently, though. So as I said, you do not do this unless you have a fraction equals a fraction. You can't have anything else. You can't have a multiplication. It's not that. Got to have an equals, one entire fraction on the left hand side and one entire fraction on the right hand side, or it won't work. Okay, we're going to do two more of these doing cross multiplying to practice it. So we'll just move over here so we can get a good look at it. Alright, so we're doing B and C. So look, let's look at B. Okay, so remember what we do. Fraction equals fraction. Yes, we can cross multiply. Keep your equals in the middle. Draw a big red cross through the middle here. Anything with more than one term has brackets. Okay, so now it doesn't matter which order you do them in. Like this one we did this one first. This time I like to do this one first. It doesn't matter. So 3 times 5, y minus 2. It's written like that. In this way, 5 times 2y plus 4. And now you're ready to do your expanding. So let's expand. 3 times 5y, 15y, minus 6 equals, oops, 10y, not 10x, 10y plus 20. All right, majority rules because we've got y's on the left and the right. There's more y's here with 15y. We're moving the plus 10y over to become minus 10y. Keep the 20 on the other side. We're moving the number across to join it. And when it comes across, it will become plus 6. And we have 5y if we collect and 26 if we collect over there. Now all you're doing is getting rid of your 5. Come over to the right hand side and divide by it. And that answer will not change on your calculator, so you give it as an improper fraction. Alright, and the last question we're doing fraction equals fraction. Yes, you can cross multiply. Bracket 
arms around anything that's more than one turn. All right, now let's go. Times in one, one of these first. Times in these next. And as I said, it doesn't matter if you have them the other way around because they'll end up the same answer. So now we're, multi we're expanding. 4 times 7, 28. 4 times minus 5x, minus 20x. 2 times 1, 2. 2 times minus 9x, minus 18x. All right, majority rules. What's bigger, minus 20x or minus 18x? Minus 18x is a bigger number. Keep that there. This one's moving over. Over it comes and becomes plus 20x now on the other side. Keep your number here. We're moving this number across to join it. Move it over and that will become minus 2 when we move it. Now let's collect. We have 26 and over here we have 2x. So the x is on the right. We have to get rid of our times 2. So let's come to the other side and do the opposite which is divide by 2. Work that out on your calculator. You end up with 13 equals x or x equals 13. That's your answer. Okay, now when you're doing this, it could have been done just as well with the method that I taught you first up. So when in doubt, use the method that I taught you in the first video because it will work for everything. I'll just show you this one, how it would work just for C. So if we have a look at C, we could, I'm just copying this question down again. So it's this one we're looking at. So all you would do is just look at the common, the common denominator for two and four. Well, two and four both go into four, so I'm gonna use four. And I only have two terms here, so I'm only going to write it outside two things. Okay, so let's do the cancelling. This cancels and gives you nothing left. This cancels and gives you a two still up there. So let's write what we see. Okay, there's nothing to expand here, so this can just stay as one minus nine x. Now, we're going to expand over here. 2 times 7 is 14. 2 times minus 5x is minus 10x. All right, now x is on both sides. What's bigger? Minus 10 or minus 9? It's minus 9. So we're keeping the minus 9x there. We're moving over our minus 10x, which will become plus 10x when it moves. 14 stays there. And this number here, this plus one, comes across and changes sign because we've changed the side. We end up with 13, and this equals x. Same answer. Okay, so it still will work this way. It's about the same number of lines, so it really doesn't make much difference which of the two ways you do. So if you think you're going to muck up the cross multiplying and do it all over the place when you shouldn't be doing it, then just stick with the method I taught you first up in the first video. It will work every single time. Okay, so if you have any problems with this work, please email me. Otherwise, good luck with your homework. Lots of practice.